This video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus, an on-demand video learning service where you'll find lectures from the top professors from around the world. Click on the link in the description to get started with your free trial today. You're at the beach one day going for a pleasant swim under the hot sun. It's a perfect day to spend floating lazily in the ocean, aside from that cut in your hand you got from a nasty barnacle on an underwater rock. But you don't pay much attention to it, you're too busy relaxing out in the water. So relaxed, in fact, that you don't even notice the fin cresting out of the water toward you. Just because you haven't been paying attention to the cut on your hand doesn't mean nobody has. In fact, to some residents of the ocean, you smell downright delicious. Sharks They are some of the oldest vertebrates on the planet, having lived even before the dinosaurs. From the tiny parasitic cookie-cutter shark to the massive filter-feeding whale shark to the majestic but deadly great white, the shark family has dominated the ocean for the past 420 million years. They've been feared, respected, and even worshipped by seafaring civilizations for thousands of years, and in recent times have been unfairly targeted out of fear due to movies like Jaws and Deep Blue Sea portraying sharks as homicidal monsters. It's easy to see where that reputation comes from. Even though sharks only rarely target humans, they possess a number of adaptations that make them the ocean's perfect killers. Probably the most famous and feared of these adaptations is a shark's ability to smell blood in the water from miles away. But that's just one part of the amazing biology that makes the shark the greatest hunter in the ocean. Before we answer our main question, let's take a quick crash course in why sharks are incredible 101. There are 500 species of shark, and all are members of the Salachimorpha family, a group that also includes rays. This family is unique among fish because unlike other vertebrates who have skeletons composed of bone, sharks and rays have skeletons composed of cartilage, the same material that forms the structure of your ears and nose. Cartilage is sturdy but also flexible, and much lower density than bone, allowing sharks to be buoyant in water without needing a swim bladder like other marine animals. In addition to this lack of a swim bladder, sharks also have a very specific pattern of fin placement. Ask anyone to draw a shark and they'll know where to place the fins a large dorsal fin on the back, a fin on either side, and a vertical fin on the end of the tail. It's no mistake that pretty much all shark species have this fin configuration. It's the perfect arrangement to maximize speed and maneuverability. Fish that have swim bladders are kind of like hot air balloons. They can only change depth by squeezing out some of the gas stored in their swim bladders, which then refills over time as they take in oxygen from the water around them. But because sharks don't need a swim bladder to stay afloat, they're more like a fighter jet, able to dive up and down in the water using only the propulsion of their back fins. That's why the arrangement of a shark's fins looks like little wings on an airplane. The two side fins are used to change direction while the upper dorsal fin acts as a stabilizer. So unlike other fish, sharks can cruise at high speeds, stop quickly, swim directly up or down, and turn on a dime. This makes it very easy for them to chase their prey. Sharks are also unique from other fish in the texture of their skin. Despite what you might think, sharks aren't smooth. Instead of having scales like other fish, they're actually covered in small teeth called denticles, which gives their skin a rough texture like sandpaper. These denticles provide a layer of lightweight armor, but are arranged in a way that minimizes drag while swimming, making sharks extremely hydrodynamic. Like all fish, sharks breathe by filtering oxygen out of the water as they swim, but their gills are structured a little bit differently. You might have heard it said that sharks will suffocate if they stop moving, and while that's not true of all sharks, it is true for a number of shark species. While some species like the wobgong are ambush predators and have the capability of laying still for long periods of time, most sharks lack a gill pump and breathe through a process called ram ventilation. As long as the shark is moving, water will flow into the gill slits where it rushes over the shark's gill filaments, allowing the oxygen in the water to diffuse into the shark's bloodstream. Now, back to our central question. Another commonly repeated fact about sharks is that they can locate a single drop of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool worth of water. That might sound impossible, but sharks really do have amazing senses at their disposal that they use to hunt. Sharks have incredibly keen hearing, able to detect sounds below the range of human hearing. Eyesight varies from species. The great white and other species that hunt close to the surface of the water have quite poor eyesight, which is the main reason behind most shark attacks. The hammerhead, in contrast, has an extremely wide field of view owing to its bizarrely shaped head. Sharks also have a very highly developed sense of taste, with some species in fact being very picky eaters. Great whites in particular are known for their pickiness. Even though they're the largest, most powerful, and most deadly of the macro-predatory sharks – macro-predatory meaning sharks that eat anything larger than plankton – great whites normally feed on seals, otters, dolphins, and large fish like tuna and mackerel, but because of their poor eyesight they rely on smell and movement to hunt. 
and will usually take an initial test bite of whatever prey they found. If the taste isn't to their liking, they'll spit it out and abandon the kill entirely. This is what happens in most shark attacks. Sharks will mistake humans for their regular prey and then leave them after one bite, once they realize what they've just chomped on. So if you're afraid of sharks, maybe you can take a little comfort in knowing that great whites at least don't find people very appetizing. But the most impressive of a shark's senses is, as we said before, their sense of smell. Sharks have two forward-facing nostrils, which passively take in water as the shark swims. The water is filtered through folds of tissue that contain millions of sensory cells that can pick up even the tiniest trace of blood. That alone is impressive. But what really gives the shark's sense of smell a killer edge is the fact that it's directional, much like our sense of hearing. The position and shape of the nostrils means that each one detects smells separately, so a shark can tell whether the scent of blood is being picked up by the left or right nostril. Using that information, the shark can follow the trail and hone in on the exact location of the wounded animal that the blood is coming from. On top of their amazing senses of smell, sharks have another sense that's unique to them as well as their close cousins, rays and skates. This sense is called electroreception, and it's exactly what it sounds like, the ability to more or less smell electricity. All animals conduct electricity, it's what allows our muscles to move around. The more we move, the more electricity our muscles release. Air is a poor conductor of electricity, so on land the ambient charge created by living creatures is simply dissipated into the air or down through our feet into the ground. Water, however, especially salt water, is an excellent conductor. So when animals swim through the water, the tiny charges that our bodies create influence an electrical field that extends far away from us. Sharks, using a cluster of specialized pores on the tips of their nose called the ampullae of Lorenzini, can detect those charges from the field. Like their sense of smell, their sense of electroreception is directional. Because the ampullae of Lorenzini is connected to the shark's lateral line, the lateral line is an organ that most fish and amphibians possess. It's a kind of tube that runs along their bellies to the end of their tails that helps them sense things like water pressure and currents. This helps them maintain a sense of direction in the featureless open ocean. A shark's sense of electroreception combined with their extremely keen sense of smell are probably the shark's two greatest weapons when it comes to locating prey. When their noses pick up a trace of blood, they can use their ampullae to sniff out the electric currents being released by whatever distressed animal the blood is coming from. Then, using their directional sense of smell, they follow the scent along with the electrical currents until they're able to pinpoint the exact location of their prey. Because sharks have such keen senses and are excellent trackers, one whiff of fish guts can attract dozens of sharks at a time. And because sharks are usually solitary predators, this can lead to a lot of competition over prey. When competition occurs, it leads to a feeding frenzy. You've probably heard that term used before, and you've probably heard it used many times to refer to Black Friday shoppers or kids at a party when the pizza finally arrives. How it typically goes is a few sharks will be attracted by the large electrical signals being put out by multiple prey in one location. Once they arrive, they'll fight over the prey. The commotion caused by the sharks fighting will add to the electrical signals, making them stronger and attracting even more sharks. Sometimes this can be relatively uneventful, but other times the sharks will start fighting each other, repeating the process, and pretty soon it turns into an all-out battle royale. Shark experts theorize that shark feeding frenzies are less about actually feeding and more about defending territory. They often engage in cannibalism as a show of dominance, with bigger sharks taking bites out of smaller ones to reinforce the pecking order. This doesn't seem to bother the small sharks as much as you think though, as sharks in frenzy mode are so fixated on claiming their share that there have been reports of frenzied sharks continuing to feed even while being mortally wounded by other sharks. Chillingly, some of the biggest shark feeding frenzies ever recorded happened at sites of shipwrecks. Because we're not used to swimming, our movements in water require more energy and produce a higher amount of electrical current. Combine that with our large body size relative to most fish and stress of having to tread water while stranded at sea, and the fact that some people in a shipwreck may end up injured and bleeding, and you have the perfect storm to cause a truly epic shark frenzy. And while most sharks don't like the taste of human flesh at all, a frenzied shark will attack and eat anything just so that other sharks won't be able to. You probably remember that scene in Jaws where Captain Quint describes the crew of the USS Indianapolis being picked off by sharks after the ship was torpedoed. Well, that was based on a true story, and it's not even the only one like it from naval history. Oceanic white-tipped sharks, one of the most common species found in open water, were known to make buffets out of many a sinking ship during the major naval battles of World War I and World War II. The steamship Nova Scotia sunk during the Second World War and had around a thousand crew members when it went down. Only 192 survived to be rescued. By their accounts, many of the crew who survived but were injured in the initial disaster were devoured by frenzied oceanic white tips. Not all sharks are so viciously territorial, however. 
The subgroup of sharks known as dogfish are so named because of the fact that they've been seen hunting cooperatively in dog-like packs. Whether they're pack hunters or working alone, gentle filter feeders or frenzied man-eaters, whether they're ambush predators or roving assassins, sharks are some of the most unique and fascinating animals on the planet. Their incredible senses make them unparalleled when it comes to tracking their prey, and because of this they've filled a vital role in the ocean's ecosystem for hundreds of millions of years. No other predator is quite as good at what they do as the shark, but unfortunately many species of shark are on the decline. Overfishing plays a part in this decline, but another part is simply fear and misunderstanding. Sharks can die getting tangled in anti-shark nets, and often if a shark attack occurs in an area this leads to all the local sharks being killed out of overcautiousness. So even though it's perfectly natural to be scared of these apex predators, keep in mind that they're just doing what they were made to do, and next time you go fishing or swimming or jet skiing, try to be mindful of the amazing creatures you're sharing the ocean with because the blood being spilled there is more often theirs than ours. Thanks again to The Great Courses Plus. I couldn't be happier that they sponsored this video since I'm both a fan and a user of theirs. You know that all of us here love to learn and challenge ourselves, sometimes in crazy ways, and no matter what you're looking for, The Great Courses Plus has a course for you. This is the very best video learning service I've ever tried, with incredible lectures from top professors at some of the best universities in the world. I feel like I'm sitting in an Ivy League classroom every time I watch a new one. They have over 11,000 videos on just about any subject subject from science to literature to how to get better at chess or even how to cook. I'm right in the middle of two courses right now, one on sketching that seriously improved my drawing skills, and one about the ancient Etruscans. I'm shocked at how many things I thought were Roman that were actually from an earlier civilization. But no matter what you're interested in, The Great Courses Plus has something for you. And best of all, they're giving viewers of The Infographic Show a free trial. Just go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash The Infographic Show and get started today. Now check out I Was Attacked by a Shark. Or, I was lost at sea for 76 days with sharks circling for more fascinating shark facts.